Ancient Greece is considered the cradle of Western civilization. So many contributions to art, architecture, science, and philosophy were highly influential on the civilizations that followed it. Philosophy holds a special place in the body of Greek knowledge. A lot of what we know about classical Greek society comes from the writings of Plato. Plato had a lot of big ideas about a lot of different things, but the only one I really care about is music. In his collection of writings called The Republic, Plato broke music down to three elements, words, melody, and rhythm. For this project and this video, I set out to find if ancient Greek music, as described by Plato and others, still holds up, and how it would sound if it was made entirely with free instrument plugins and limited technical skills. In the Republic, Plato emphasizes the importance of modes in music. A mode is a certain melodic scale with distinct intervals in it, which give it a particular flavor. The general concept is like major and minor scales, happy, sad, positive, negative, but with more complex variations. According to Plato, most Lydian modes were expressive of sorrow, and they should be banned from society. The Ionian mode, which is really just the standard major scale, was soft and convivial. I'm most interested in the Dorian and Phrygian scales, which I find to be very spicy and colorful. But this isn't about me. What did Plato think of the Dorian and Phrygian? Of the Dorian and the Phrygian. Harmonies I know nothing, but would have you leave me one which can render the note or accent which a brave man utters in warlike action and in stern resolve. And when his cause is failing, and he is going to wounds or death or is overtaken by disaster in some other form, at every such crisis he meets the blows of fortune with firm step and a determination to endure, and an opposite kind for times of peace and freedom of action, when there is no pressure of necessity, and he is seeking to persuade God by prayer, or man by instruction and admonition, or when on the other hand he is expressing his willingness to yield to the persuasion or entreaty or admonition of others. And when in this manner he has attained his end, I would have the music show him not carried away by his success, but acting moderately and wisely in all circumstances, and acquiescing in the event. These two harmonies I ask you to leave, the strain of necessity and the strain of freedom, the strain of the unfortunate and the strain of the fortunate, the strain of courage, and the strain of temperance, these, I say, leave. Okay, well, I'm going to go with the Dorian mode for my song. Obviously, whatever music Plato was listening to sounded very different from modern music. I doubt anyone living remembers what ancient Greek music sounded like, and I'm kind of just screwing around here. So for better information on the subject, let's turn to the world's leading authorities, British men with degrees. I'm an associate professor of classics at Oxford University, and for the last five years I've been concentrating on reconstructing the sounds of ancient Greek music. We're rehearsing in Jesus College Chapel for a concert that we're going to be putting on later in the Ashmolean Museum. The singers in the choir are scholars of ancient music and they're going to be accompanied by replicas of original instruments that were used in ancient Greece. What we call Greek poetry is mainly words that were intended to be sung, very often with the accompaniment of instruments so the Greek poetry of the ancient world, this was all sung to music. People think the music is lost. I don't believe it is. We have the rhythms, we have the instruments, and we have the melodies. Put that together and you have the music. Recreating the melodic instruments was the most complicated part of this project. So I'm gonna start with that before we talk about rhythm, the other component of my experiment. If we look at old pottery and paintings, we can see that the Greeks mainly used two types of melodic instruments, stringy ones and fluty ones. The string instrument most associated with ancient Greece is the lyre, which is sort of like a little harp, and it has several variations. One really cool instrument from the lyre family is the kithara, which happens to be where the word guitar comes from. <laughs> That is the way a traditional, conventional lyre would be played in ancient Greece. But the kithara can do this. The lyre was closely associated in Greek culture with Apollo, the god of music, light, and poetry. 
and one of the most popular gods in Greece. It seems the Greeks played it for any occasion. Religious ceremonies, parties, elections maybe, funerals, you name it. Recreating the lyre wasn't that difficult, but that never stops me from having a difficult time with things. The digital audio workstation I use is Logic, which doesn't seem to have a stock lyre plugin. So I considered sampling clips of a lyre and making an instrument out of the samples, but I decided against it for reasons I'll get into a little later. So what I ended up doing is synthesizing my own lyre, using stock plugins that have certain lyre qualities. I combined some good low and middle frequencies from a santur, a Persian string instrument, with some plucky high frequencies from the same instrument, then filled it in with low and middle frequencies from a harp. I spent way too long tweaking each ingredient and messing with reverb and things like that, but the end result is actually pretty simple. We've got the stringy part of the melody covered, which leaves us with the flute. Before we really dive into the instrument, I'd like to share some of Plato's thoughts on flutes. In The Republic, Plato's student asks a pressing question. Should people who play the flute be allowed to step foot in the state of Greece? Plato responded, clearly not. Which confused me at first. I mean, the flute is so sweet and pure. It makes you feel like a child again, fluttering so tenderly above the clouds, unafraid of anything like- No! This man Plato hated the flute. He said they should be banned from cities and left only for the shepherds in the country to use. But upon further investigation, it became clear that Plato was talking about a very different flute. The flute of his day was the aulos, which was a really buzzy, shrill device made of two flutes for some reason. So there we are, I'm sharing the la da, la da 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 dum. I can play the bottom note here, and I can play the next note there. But I don't have both of those notes on both pipes. <laughs> so it's got to be shared. I'll never understand why certain things are popular, but it doesn't really matter what I think about the aulos, and it also doesn't really matter what Plato thought, because most people in ancient Greece seem to love this instrument. Just like the lyre, the aulos appeared throughout countless artworks and was a go-to instrument for melody. It was used in festivals, athletic tournaments, funerals, tragic, tragic theater performances. If you lived in a big city at the height of the Greek Empire, there was no escaping the wrath of the aulos. So here's my attempt to make a digital one. I approached the aulos a lot like the lyre. The sound of the aulos is so distinctly soul-retching that I again considered sampling clips of it to make the virtual instrument. But trying to use samples to make a natural-sounding melodic instrument is very touchy. Sampling is a lot easier for things like drums, where you can use a couple samples for the different drum hits, and it won't be quite as noticeable if it doesn't sound natural. But wind instruments specifically are a lot easier to hear in a mix, so if it sounds too unnatural, you'd hear it instantly. The tone of every note in a flute is variable depending on things like breath and finger placement, so one sample for each note probably won't cut it. Another problem with sampling an aulos is that it's always playing two notes at the same time, and you can't really isolate the notes from each other in the sample. So, like the lyre, I decided to synthesize my virtual aulos. Technically, I made two slightly different instruments, one to represent each of the pipes. For the higher aulos, I combined frequencies from a clarinet, an oboe, and an English horn. For the lower pitched aulos, I combined different frequencies also from a clarinet, an oboe, and an English horn. And since I really wanted to capture that feeling of being chased down an alley by a swarm of kazoos, I needed to add something with a buzzy texture. The obvious choice to me was a kazoo, but I couldn't find a free kazoo plugin or an actual physical kazoo in time. What I ended up doing was making a synthesizer out of a saw wave and then just tried to fuzz it up a little with effects. It didn't have exactly the buzz I was searching for, but I just cut my losses and moved on. After all, the goal of this project is to try. 
With the melodic instruments done, it's time to move on to the rhythm. Rhythm is a crucial component of music. It keeps time, builds structure, and maintains energy in songs. And it was one of Plato's big three in music. But interestingly, in The Republic, the student asks Plato to explain rhythm, and Plato basically says, I don't know, ask somebody else. With this in mind, I looked for a little more information on percussion in ancient Greece, and I found that it has a less transparent role than melody. A lot of records show percussion being strongly tied to lyrical rhythms and poetry. I'm not working with poetry though, and there's not that much information I could find on instrumental rhythms by themselves. But all I really need to know is what the percussion sounded like, and luckily there's a lot of information on that. The main ancient Greek percussion instruments that I'm focusing on are the frame drum and the clapper. The frame drum is in a lot of art, and it's speculated that it was central to theater, war dances, and spiritual rituals. It was considered to have great power in shaping reality. In reenactments of Greek myths, the frame drum was often used to represent people entering or leaving the underworld, like a chthonic messenger. I love the frame drum, and it was a lot simpler to work with in this project than the melodic instruments. I found a video of someone playing a frame drum, and I brought the audio into Logic, chopped it up, threw it in a sampler, added a little reverb, and ta-da, I have a basic but effective virtual frame drum. I had a lot of fun just zoning out and playing frame drum rhythms on my keyboard. Oh yeah, and the clapper. I could have spent hours reading about the exact type of clapper the Greeks used, but that's the work of professionals. I know that the clapper they used was very similar in design and sound to a castanet, which coincidentally already exists as a plug-in in Logic. I messed with compression and reverb a little bit, and if you use your imagination, this ordinary virtual castanet is now a Greek clapper. With all of my instruments done, it's time to revisit modes. The plan was to make my melody in the Dorian mode, so I'd like to briefly explain that. The basis of the Dorian mode is a scale in the key of D, where you only use the white keys, and it sounds like this. If you apply the sequence of intervals, half steps and whole steps, from this all white D scale to any other key, then you'll have that key in the Dorian mode. Whenever I'm playing the Dorian mode, I'll always try to play the melody from So What by Miles Davis because that song is in D Dorian. And if the melody sounds right, then I'm in the Dorian mode. For the melodies in my song, all I did was park myself in the scale of C sharp Dorian and diddle around over the frame drum rhythm until I had something kind of nice. So here it is, my ancient Greek effort in C sharp Dorian. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun with this project, even though it was really, really frustrating. But ancient Greece is just such a cool topic, and especially how ancient music has influenced modern day music, and just the way music has evolved in general. And Plato thought he had it all figured out. But if people hadn't broken his rules, music would be nothing like it is today. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks to my friends for helping. Man, how do you end a video? Video. <laughs> video.